Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to this sort of surface sessions and molten modular mashup where I'm combining a couple of my my favorite things, modular synthesis and a bit of surface. And what I want to show very simply in this video is multi-track audio recording on the Surface Go and how I actually accomplish that coming out of my modular. So modular multi-channels of audio going into the Surface Go. Is it capable of recording multi-track audio? That's the kind of thing I've got going on. And in this, I'm going to be featuring the Steady State Fate Muton, which is over here. Now this throws up a couple of questions. First of all, how do you get multi-track audio into the Surface Go? And how do you get multiple channels of audio out of your modular? Well, let me show you. For the Surface Go, what you need is a multi-channel audio interface. Yeah, I know that sounds pretty obvious, but you'll be amazed at how many people don't really quite grasp this. So a USB device, a USB audio interface that has multiple inputs and outputs. It doesn't need the outputs in this case. We're just looking for multiple inputs. And as such, what I have here is the Arturia Audio Fuse. This is the audio interface I'm using for the Surface Go. This plugs in via USB, via a USB hub, because this has USB-C in the side, and this is a regular USB AB type cable jobby. So that's plugged into a little hub, which then goes into the side of the Surface Go. And the Audio Fuse by itself just provides the usual sort of stereo in and out sort of business, but via the magic digital cable here, uh -huh. This gives me access to an additional eight inputs via ADAT Optical. Now, ADAT Optical is simply a, a digital audio connection that contains eight channels of audio. It used to be used in old ADAT machines, which were digital recording machines that recorded to videotape, would you believe? But that format, that digital audio format, is still very much in use today. And it's that which enables the audio fuse to handle an additional eight channels of audio. But in order to do that, you need some kind of box which will take the audio outputs of the modular and squeeze them down into that light pipe digital connection to go into the audio fuse. So some kind of box, you say? Yes, yeah, some kind of box, a converter, a row of mic preamps often that then convert that into ADAT optical for whatever audio interface or device you're routing that to. So before all of this gets far too confusing, let me bring you in closer and explain exactly What's going on? So as far as the Surface Go and the audio fuse are concerned, all it cares about is this cable. This is what comes out of our ADAT converter box, our mic preamp to ADAT box. It just comes out in a digital cable, which is a laser cable, an optical cable. You've seen the sort of thing. It looks like this. See that? That kind of data is spilling out of that cable now all over the floor and it's all over my hands now. Meanwhile, over here, I have a whole load of cables disappearing off the desk and those are going to my ADAT box. Let's have a look down here. So here, here is my ADAT box. It's in a nice little rack, racked up out of the way and it has these inputs in the front, eight channels, eight channels of analog audio going in, either microphone into these sorts of sockets or line level into here, and then you've got a gain knob to control the level of what's going in. That's really very, very handy because the audio out of Eurorack is often quite hot, quite loud. And so having something with which to attenuate that is a good thing. This is called an Ultra Gain Digital or an ADA 8200. It's a piece of Behringer gear. It does the job. And I have individual channels of audio from my modular on this bunch of cables going into individual channels. Those are then sent over that digital cable as eight separate channels arriving at the Surface Go, where I can record them. So how do I get the audio out of this mass and mess of Eurorack into the converter to go to the Surface Go? Well, I'm using this magical module called the Muton here. I mean, you don't need this to do it, but this actually makes it stunningly easy. I mean, previously before I've been taking outputs from the old VCA from here, the output of something else and routing that through. But what the Muton does is gives me not only a great performance tool because I can mute channels in and out, which is what these big buttons do, but I can kind of use it as a stage for outputs to go somewhere else. This has eight channels of it. It's essentially an eight channel VCA, a voltage controlled amplifier. 
and for each channel I have a mute button so I can turn different things on and off very very easily. Each one also has a CV input so I can control the level if I want to either using an envelope into it or just a, uh, a control voltage level to, in order to balance things out a bit right and then they all have individual outputs and it's these outputs that I'm using to route out to the ADAT converter. Now normally when I'm using my modular I'm going through an output unit over here so I end up mixing everything kind of internally and everything ends up eventually just going through here. This also has a send for effects. Now, as I'm sending everything out individually, I'm not routing through any effects at all. So all of this is coming out very clean. So the recording I'll do on the Surface Go isn't exactly as it would be if I was performing live with this because some of those effects like reverb, for instance, are missing. But once I've recorded it into the Surface Go, then I'll be able to apply a little bit of mixing, a little bit of reverb, delay and balancing levels and panning and that kind of control afterwards in my recording software. I mean, one of the things with Eurorack is that there's a, an interest or an excitement about and recording it just as it happens, just getting in there, performing the piece, having it recorded, and then it's done. However, using a door over here, that'll give us a whole load of sort of post-production and mixing possibilities that perhaps will just elevate it to be that little bit better than it is straight from here, simply because I don't have the equipment in my Eurorack to really produce a full releasable mix. What I do, and I don't. I mean, those things are movable objects. How long is a piece of string kind of questions. But ultimately, my recording software on the Surface Go is going to allow me to do a bit of mixing and a bit of effects adding. So I'm going to do that because some of that will be missing because I am recording individual channels out of my Eurorack. I hope that makes sense. So although there are eight channels in the Muton, I only actually have six that I want to use. Now, this cable is really annoyingly in the way. Why don't I put that somewhere else? Perfect, now I have access to all of these eight channels. So let me turn these on and off and show you what happens on the Surface Go. I hope that it's demonstration enough to show that the Surface Go is completely capable of recording that level of audio all at once to its internal drive. I'm not using any sort of external drive, I'm just using whatever the Surface Go happens to have built into it. So I have the 2HP plug coming through on this channel. And you can see over on the Surface Go that we're getting a level indication here on ADAT number one. And the next channel should be bass. Coming up in ADAT channel two. Then ADAT number three is, an, is the STO, the output from the STO. Then I've got the sub out from the STO, channel four. Channel 5, I've got a bit of kick drum coming out of the Erica Synth's Pico drums. And then I've got some noise coming out of the Basimilus. So that is six channels of ADA all being monitored there, coming out of my modular. Now as you can hear, that sounds flipping amazing. Well, maybe. So what we're actually seeing there is the audio fuse control panel and the monitoring that it uses through its own software but what we're interested in is going to be bitwig and how that feels about it so i've set up eight channels within bitwig to record directly to the timeline and the plan is going to be that we turn all of these on you can see we've got six channels there recording you should just be able to hit record So here I've just recorded six channels, well actually eight channels because I had these other two channels activated which didn't need to be, funnily enough, and then we can play that back. <laughs> But more interestingly, what I will do is 
perform for about 10 minutes on the modular, record that directly into Bitwig, then maybe do that again, maybe do that again, a couple of times, I don't know, in order to capture some kind of performance and then I can mix it and edit it on the Surface Go. That's the plan, that's what we're trying to do here. So in answer to the question, can the Surface Go cope with multi-channel recording of audio? The answer is absolutely yes. No problem at all, it hasn't even thought about it. Not a problem, and I can similarly add a reverb and do a little bit of mixing and that kind of thing without it really batting an eyelid. So that's good to know. How many channels of audio can it do? Oh, wow, well, you know, whatever. All I can do <laughs> is do a demonstration of something that it can do, and then, you know, you have to see for yourself whether that's an indication of how it can work in your situation or your environment. Because I don't know, I just do stuff. Put it out there. Right, now I'm gonna get on and start recording this for real this time in here and perform it and tweak it and that kind of thing. And I'm gonna release a video, I hope, of the performance of that that I do and the finished mixed recording. So look out for that and look out for some more Surface Go videos coming very soon as I'm getting stuck back into it again now along with more videos on the Surface Pro 6, more videos on Modular, more videos on all sorts of music technology, wonderful, wonderful things. So I hope that was helpful, and in the meantime, go and make some tunes.